You know what really fries my rear is when old man Mason's son, and for that matter, Palmer Cortland called you a gold digging witch. I defend you. I say, Natalie, no, no, no. She's as pure as the driven snow. <laughs> I'm mad as hell. You know, really, if you think I care what Paul McCortland or anyone else has to say about me, you are sadly mistaken. Be well, you better damn well care what I say about you. Because nobody walks on my face and gets away Oh, with Trevor, it. for heaven's sakes, I try to... And I don't want to hear you, any of your lame brain excuses. Excuses? I had a very good reason for standing you up. I had a professional reason for which I called me? you six times. You I expect me to believe that the Pine Valley Hospital places. sends out nurses in red dresses to entertain rich Texans? Well, what profession are we in, honey? Trevor! Nurse Natalie does Dallas. Get out! You act like a gold digging tramp. You get called one. Hello? Natalie, hi, it's Angie. I'm sorry to bother you this late, but Virgil Mason asked me to call you. His vital signs have taken a serious downward turn, and he's asking to see you. It, uh, doesn't look good. I'll be right there. Well? It could be worse. <laughs> Keep smiling. I don't know, Virgil. Maybe the uh, filet mignon and the Napoleon you put away at dinner just isn't agreeing with you. <laughs> yeah, indigestion. <laughs> Is there anything I can do to make you more comfortable? Yeah, you can. Uh, you can tell him to get this safe off my chest. That should ease up just as soon as the medication takes effect. Oh, I, I know what's happening. Well, the arteries are constricting. Dr. Hubbard and the uh, cardiologist explained that to you, right? Yeah, I'm a goner. St. Peter's waiting room. I'm disappointed. What happened to the old reformed cow hen that all the men in the Texas Panhandle called the wild catter with nine lives? Oh, you, you remembered. Of course I remembered. I remember all the stories you told me, and I look forward to hearing a lot more. Right now, I need you to try to get some rest, OK? I, uh... I want you to know that whatever happens, your friendship means a great deal to me. You're the best nurse in the business and, and a fine, decent young woman. Thank you. And also, you're, uh, you're the prettiest date I've had in a dog's age. <laughs> well, I am honored to be your friend, Virgil. But right now, I need you to promise me you're going to close your eyes and try to get some rest. Yeah, I'll... Uh, I'll try. I'll see you soon. Yeah. So, my father's had a relapse. He is resting comfortably. He is practically in a class four cardiac arrest, and it is your fault. If he dies, you're responsible. I understand your concern no, about no, your father's No, 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 you don't condition. understand anything. My father is a sick man. He may be a dying man. What do you do? You take advantage of it. I, I am a nurse. I was doing my job. Your job, huh? What's your job? Dressing up like a, like a, a New York showgirl and walking into a black tie dinner on the arm of a heart patient who ought to be back in his hospital bed. You call that a job? I did not walk in on his arm. Yeah, well, I call it a job, too, only I don't call it nursing. At your father's request, and the request of his doctors, I carefully observed his vital signs all evening. Yeah, you sure did. You observed his vital signs so carefully that he has just had a complete relapse Excuse from which Dr. Me? Kramer says he may never recover. Is there a problem here? Mr. Mason seems to hold me responsible for his father's relapse. He had no business going to the dinner tonight. She talked him into it. Nobody talks your father into anything. He was warned leaving the hospital could bring on a crisis, but he was determined to go and chose to disregard medical advice. Yeah, well, then she played on his ego. She's got him wrapped right around her little finger. Your father felt an obligation to attend a banquet. It was his legal and moral right to make that decision. However, Dr. Kramer only signed the release forms after Ms. Hunter agreed to accompany him. You're a doctor. Now, you tell me, 
Is this a medical facility or is it uh, what some folks back in Texas still like to call a house of ill repute? Oh, that's it. I've had enough. I am filing charges against you. You go right ahead. You file any charges you like. Natalie. You, uh, you have a sick mind, sir. And any charges you file will prove that. I'll put this whole place out of business. Mrs. Cranston needs her lab work. She's scheduled for surgery tomorrow at 6. Okay, okay, thank you. I'll tell them it's coming. Thanks, Pam. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where, where do you think you're heading? Where do you think you're heading? Hematology. Well, sure, Trevor. Well, you, you think I'm lying? You followed her here. Who? Nat <laughs> Natalie's at home. Well, she's not at home. Well, she, she's in with that, that, that Texan money bag. What, did he have a relapse? Yeah, I figured. You know, she has that effect on men. Did you ever notice that? Me, honey, I'm giving blood. Mrs. Cranston? Yeah, the assistant chief's wife. How's she doing? She's scheduled for surgery tomorrow morning. I'm impressed. We'll do under others, Doc. What, now, what room did you say the uh, Texan was in? <laughs> I didn't, nor do I intend to. You've given Natalie enough grief for one grief. night. Wouldn't you what agree? about the grief she gave me? Now she's in there ministering to whatever needs she didn't satisfy on their date. It was not a date, you... <coughs> Natalie is a professional. It wasn't a date. And the... yeah, right. she mm -hmm. deserves a lot more respect than you're giving her. Yeah, you see that? Now, she was on private duty tonight, paid for by <laughs> yeah. Mr. Mason and prescribed by her doctor. Uh -huh. It was a selfless act of a dedicated nurse, and your insinuations are insulting. So... Wait a second, honey. You're not going anywhere. Hold it right there. I got some questions for you. Yeah. I didn't come here to see you. I came here. I, I just had a little chat with your friend, Dr. Hubbard, and I have one question for you. You're Cut me some slack. If you worked the whole day shift, how come the cardiologist for this old coot didn't hire a nurse who hadn't, hadn't worked the whole day? Because the only other nurse who was familiar with the case was on vacation. My job was to reduce Virgil's stress. I don't think I need to explain that to you or to anyone else. Now, may I ask you a question? You always jump to conclusions about your friends. I don't have any friends. Now you know why. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Cubicle B, West Wing. A lab technician's waiting for you. You know, you're lucky he's one of our best. He just loves taking blood. Everyone on the staff calls him the Count of Transylvania. <laughs> You love to needle me, don't you? Well, you know, for a while there, Trevor, I was afraid that Natalie was falling for whatever act you've been pulling when you're with her. But tonight she saw through you. Oh, Trevor, you blew it. Take that form, fill it out, cubicle B, West Wing, and don't worry because the Count never misses a vein. Go away! Open the door. Enough, Trevor! Trevor! I said I'm gonna call Berniker. I'll call Berniker. I'm not kidding. Trevor! All right. Now, I know that you are perfectly capable of curling up right here and freezing to death and becoming a frozen corpse, which is why I'm going to say yeah, this. Yeah, I know you want me to disappear, I... but I drove all the way out here to tell you this. It's very important to me. I'm willing to forgive you. You're what? I'm willing to forgive you confusing me. If you weren't so gorgeous and, and, and confusing, I wouldn't have said all the wrong-headed things I said today, and I, I wouldn't have insulted you the way I did. Are you apologizing or blaming me? 